We have a very good panel here today. Um, we're going to keep it very, very interactive more here. So feel free to interrupt me while I navigate through the deck. I mean, this is more like for us to have some pivoting point for conversation. But otherwise, it'll be mostly whatever you are interested in. All right. Um, so what? So I know we have some new friends here uh, who wants to learn about highway, and uh, I would be more than willing to sign you up today if you are <laughs> if you are capable of doing the making the decision today. And if you want to make some phone calls, you can use my cell phone. If you want to <laughs> and make it happen. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 what are we going to do? What is mass highway? And uh, so, why should you connect? And and also, one of the important topics today, why most of us are here, and how can mass highway help you with your meaningful use goals and objectives? Um, so. What is Mass Highway? The primarily, uh, Mass Highway is uh, built up on the foundation of secure electronic messaging uh, to provision to healthcare organizations that are across the state to be able to securely and uh, uh, privately able to exchange any type of health information in respect to of uh, what type of message it is. Um, and it is also the other simplest way that I put together to lot of uh, primary care and uh, skilled nursing facilities and long-term care facilities is if you are on fax uh, mode of transportation today for your messaging, this is the way to do it. There is no other better alternative. There is, it's the simplest way to simply, if you are using a fax today, get rid of the fax. Get on highway, get going. And because it simply enables you to uh, securely transport and be able to say that I have a traceability of where my information went to, who it went to, and when it went. So it's that's as simple as that. And the other next step, once you are matured and once you think you have started exchanging securely on highway, the next phase, what we call the second uh, query and retrieve service, is basically uh, you enables organizations to be able to see when a patient travels from one facility to another facility, Mass Highway, by virtue of its communication of direct messaging, enables those other hospitals or the healthcare organizations to be able to present that patient information, the very basic demographic information, saying that this patient belongs to that facility in some form or shape for, through his episodic visit, and the and enables the other organization to see that, oh, Murali has traveled to so-and-so hospital and he has a relationship with that with that hospital or the facility. That's all it is. So it's a, a relationship building listing service. That's all we call it. So we're, we're gonna spend probably most of our energy and uh, Q&A on the direct messaging. But if anybody has more uh, curiosity or interest in based on where you are with your organization's direct messaging capability today, I'll be more than happy to dive into more details on the query and return. But otherwise, the majority of our effort will be on the direct messaging. Okay? And some of the myths that I want to clear, clarify today is a lot of people often confuse Mass Highway with the health insurance connector. So we are not a health insurance connector. We do not sell health insurance. <laughs> we are here to... <laughs> we are here to facilitate electronic exchange of patient information. And we are also completely content agnostic. If you send a picture of your dog, we will take it. Because we don't know. We don't know what you're sending. All we know is, oh, it originated from Keeley and it was being sent to Len. That's all we know. And all we validate is whether Keeley is a valid authorized person to send and whether Len is a valid authorized person to receive that information or not. And so whatever I just explained, we're gonna just take a quick peek here. I'm gonna pause for five seconds so people get a chance. So as you can see, we have, what we did is we made it a step-by-step. -step. Um, so essentially a patient here walks into the provider's office, whether it's a PCP or a hospital, and they are presented with what is called as a consent flag, saying that your information is potentially being transmitted over mass highway transport. Just like how you will send today through fax, we are saying that you will be sending it through mass highway. And we'll cover why we have to do that explicit uh, uh, declaration uh, in a little bit here. And then that particular provider or the hospital 
would have the ability to say, who am I sending this patient information to? And they can look up the provider, the other provider, the referring provider, and then they can simply using but via their EHR or via whatever the type of medium that they are connected to highway, they'll be able to send a message to the recipient on the other side. So it's very simple. Today, if you know how to send an email, you know how to use Mass Highway. And the rest of, a lot of uh, nuances and a lot of uh, complexity that people have been thinking about Mass Highway is behind the scenes. It's all what it takes by your EHR or by your IT system that you have in, inside your organization is what needs to happen. So we enable it through simple, what is called a secure certificate exchange. So we install some certificates within your IT system and that enables you to utilize our connection and simply transport the message electronically and secure. So any questions on that? Okay. And so the concept, as I said, so this is another myth that people have about Mass Highway is, oh, I need to get a consent, so I'm, I'm, I don't know what it needs to do, and there are so many other forms of consent that are happening in your organization today. But what I want you to do is take, take a deep breath, take it slow, and say, what is it that I'm doing today? When Murli walks into this Dr. John Smith's office, what is he being asked? I'm typically presented, um, I'll give you an example. I take my, da uh, my daughter, she's eight year old, and I walked into CVS Minute Clinic for an immediate care over the weekend. And then they said, oh, uh, do I, uh, so you just have to go through a bunch of uh, paperwork, right? How many times did we really read all of that paperwork? No, no, all I care about is I need to get the medicine soon. But of course, you are presented with the notice of privacy practices. So you go through that, and in that, if you see, it clearly says that, I will be transmitting your patient data through fax or mail and exchanging it with other healthcare organizations for healthcare operations, right? And what we are saying is, you simply write there, wherever you use that word fax or mail, you're also saying you could, you could potentially incorporate the word mass highway, through mass highway. So mass highway is nothing but a simple transport, secure transport mechanism and for the reasons of using it, we are saying just present that and you could achieve the concept. And or whatever other way, so it may not be the way, but you already have a consent model in your organization today. When a patient walks in, you're already asking and asking him to say yes on certain things. So that's the same thing that we are requesting uh, you to go through. And you don't have to do anything, uh, anything new or complex, but you do have to educate them about saying that mass highway is being used. Can I turn that into a question just to see who has a formal consent to treat already? Not an MPP sign-off, not an acknowledgement, but an actual <coughs> consent to treat form in use. Uh, who has no consent to treat form right now? Um, and who has a sensitive release form, which is so, I, I, I will release this to somebody else. Okay. So there's kind of three sets of forms there. You know, the easiest way to do this is, like Marley said, is to tack it on to your existing consent to treat. If you have one, you can add Mass Highway as part of it, or you can get it into the NPP. If you don't have a consent to treat formalized right now, um, then the Highway website has a, a one-line thing that you can put into place into your processes. If you have any questions on that one. This one gets really confused and muddy really easily, but I think it's pretty straightforward, so please ask us if you have any questions. And you can also, as Mark indicated, uh, so we do have some uh, lessons learned and examples on our website, so you can go and uh, look at those as well. Or talk to your colleagues, or talk to your other uh, organizations. So again, go ahead, Amanda. Well, it's the problem where they say they don't consent. Okay. And our EMR doesn't mm -hmm. have the ability to track whether the patient said they didn't Supposed to do that so, happens. so that's it. So, because I know which EMR you're on, so I'm going to change the uh, the response based on that instead of answering in general. So, if you are you, she, uh, so uh, Amanda is from Hollywood Medical Center. She uses uh, uh, eClinical Works. eClinical Works is connected to Mass Highway using what is called as HISP to HISP connection. It's two HISPs connected directly uh, through the private uh, vendor network. So, in those cases, we do not. You are not a member of Mass Highway. You are a member of ECW HISP, and you do not need to uh, 
uh, take mass having consent for that. Because you are not a member, you are not a officially mass having member. And the, and the clarification there, I think, is that we're, we're talking about for direct messaging. So this is separate from the query and retrieve functionality. Remember where uh, we're going to uh, we're going to actually uh, submit ADTs to the Mass Highway to populate our relationship listing service that, that Merle spoke about. That's a, a separate step, and, and there's uh, in that instance you would need to be able to capture the consent uh, from the from the patient so that you could transmit that along with your ADT message to us. But uh, for just direct messaging. Merlin was talking about now. To be able to send messages to another provider, uh, you're just going to uh, ask them for that consent, and you don't necessarily have to transmit that. And if you're coming in through a different HISP, then you're following the procedures of your own EHR and uh, the, way that, uh, the way that that's working, and they're connected on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> does, does everybody know what a HISP is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, a HISP, yeah. Yeah. I just want to just clarify the term. I'm sorry, Tasha, I know you had a question. No, that's okay. I just want to clarify the term. Um, so, a HISP is a health information service provider. Mass Highway is a HISP. Um, essentially, for the purposes of this discussion, a HISP is issuing your direct address and your direct messaging services and being responsible for all of those security certificate exchanges in the background. So we like to explain it, for example, as being like a Gmail and an Outlook. Okay, they're both, they're not HIS, but in our world, ECW functions as a HIS, the Mass Highways functions as a HIS. But you can communicate between the two of them because the two organizations have those security agreements in place. If you're getting your direct address and messaging services from, that, that is typically the HIS that you need to get the consent for using, for transport. So that's why we're saying that consent to use the Mass Highway if your direct address has Mass Highway in it. In other words, you signed up for your account with the Mass Highway and not through the ECW GISP. Yeah, I just had a quick question. In terms of consent, um, do you know if any of the uh, EHR vendors or their practices are uh, placing their consents in their patient portal? For their patients to sign off on. So yeah, we have um, seen a couple of organizations customize the portal for that purpose. Yes, we have seen that uh, they have implemented uh, web portals, mm -hmm. and in the patient web portals, they've added custom uh, custom custom mm -hmm. options, and they've done that. Exclude uh, a uh, couple of examples where they've done it for purposes of the relationship listing service, mm -hmm. where they need to get the exclusive content, uh, consent. Consent. And the other thing is. I don't know, it's more of a statement than no. it's maybe a question too, but um, when we're talking about consent and you mentioned facts and I'm like, okay, I remember my days on working on the clinical side and I don't recall there ever being um, this much uh, scrutiny, this much sensitivity yes. around sending a fax yep. where you don't know if the person on the other end got the facts, but within the HIPAA notice that we gave, I don't think we had patients and honed on, well, you know, we're sending this through fax. So I find it very interesting that for the mode of communication or transmission is changing, I guess I'm more interested in understanding the heightened sensitivity around going through this channel. I don't even, I don't even think RS sends or mail. I think it just says will send. I don't yeah, think ours, yeah, I don't yeah, think it yeah. actually gives any mode of transport. It just right, says we'll share. Yeah. I, I just, <laughs> yeah. Smoke signal. There's a, a seven, like a 20 second history lesson, 2008 General Court, Massachusetts, HIE. Okay. It's being contemplated as a, as a, it had two functions in, in people's minds when the legislature was looking at it. One was to have a clinical data repository which would collect some information. And one was to have transport going through the, the um, statewide HIE back then. But but back then the standards would mean that the, the HIE would look, would be able to say, oh, that's a lab result for Keeley coming from oh, such and such a okay. lab. Direct wasn't invented. Oh, so okay. this, this kind of invisible kind of FedEx model, which nobody can see in the package, was not even invented. So the legislature covered all the angles, and they put into law in the second healthcare um, law that 
um, you shall have consent, an opt-in consent. So the highway's really done their best to um, honor the, the letter of the law mm -hmm. um, on that. Um, there is a, there's a consent worker that is multi-stakeholder that is met throughout the summer that is making recommendations right now to your point, Tarsha, which is to say to take a look at this. And that's been presented to the HIT council meeting um, as a formal um, as a formal recommendation that mass highway direct messaging mirror workflow for fax mm -hmm. and, and other modes of transport. Because in fact it is more secure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and yeah, that, that's right. I mean we, we know just by virtue of not using fax it is more secure. So but of course we have to do part of education. So we're all are getting matured and knowing more and more, you know, that's why security and uh, not security, uh, they all go together always. The more you try to secure, people try to find more holes. <laughs> all right, so as you can see, uh, to Amanda's point, I do, we do have some exceptions. So these are the exceptions in which cases you don't need a mass highway consent. So when you're submitting to the public health registries, you don't do that because you do it anyway as part of regulation today. So some of those examples. And you can always see us after um, if you need more clarity on any of this. And here is a list of what can you send through Mass Highway, assuming you're connected. And the, uh, the very obvious one is the summary of care or the transition of care record. So when a patient is being referred by the PCP over to the specialist, um, then that is a good uh, use case that you could use Mass Highway for. Or even uh, in the cases where a, a specialist uh, completes his visit and then the patient is being sent back to the PCP or, or the uh, specialist wants to send back a concept note of what has happened at the visit. So those are some examples. And here, uh, that's with respect to the patient it, itself. And uh, on, the, on the clinical alerts uh, standpoint, so when a patient visits a ED, uh, we could use Mass Highway to send a alert to the PCP saying that your patient has been admitted to the emergency department so they can take care of uh, immediate response and uh, reduce the readmission rates. <coughs> That's a very good classic example. Uh, even when a patient gets transferred, uh, so all the ADT, that's what we're talking about. So there are a, we use ADT for direct secure messaging uh, just like any other uh, patient, uh, uh, keeping the doctor and the, everybody invo involved in the, in the care coordination. So you could keep them informed by using direct secure messaging and sending the ADTs to the respective party. And, it, and what you can take it one step further and then you can step into the RLS where everybody can also see the other details about where the patient has been. So those are the details we'll cover in a little bit here. So, and with respect to the public health reporting, um, I have a, one more slide, I'll show you all the details about that. And the other important one I want to focus on is quality reporting. So um, we also have seen significant use cases of where organizations are sending the patient data, uh, either uh, the CCDs or other custom data over to private vendors to perform PQRS reporting or uh, clinical quality analytics or any other data analytics that they want to do or even for ACO purposes uh, because they want to find out the outcomes and process measures and how well their, patient, their providers are doing, or uh, even for uh, some of the AQC measures as well. So anything to do that, you, you are, so uh, Mass Highway is not only for providers or uh, hospitals or healthcare organizations, but it's also for vendors. Like, so any organization that's providing any kind of clinical data analytics, they could uh, join Mass Highway and they could seek information from other organizations as well. The criteria we use for that is if you're a business associate of a healthcare organization. So as long as it falls under the, the treatment payment and operations of, of HIPAA, then you're eligible to join the Mass Highway. And so we have a number of relationships like that where uh, we're a, a supplier can provide services to uh, provider organizations where, where payers can join to exchange information. Okay. Uh, an example is I also have uh, Health Leads is an organization does, uh, that does a uh, finds uh, homes uh, for uh, uh, certain patients uh, and uh, what uh, I think it's BMC, I think it's BMC sending to one of those organizations where they help the patients. It's, it's a whole, uh, completely not, nothing to do with healthcare but it's like they, fi they actually provide aftercare, uh, aftercare services uh, for some of the patients. So just to make sure that they don't get readmitted uh, more and more. So that's another example of that. And there's a, there's a uh, 
program called e-referrals that, yep. that the state is running. It's associated with that with uh, lining up a number of vendors that are not on the highway themselves, but then you, uh, as a provider organization, you can access the e-referral program through the highway, and they have service providers uh, that can access through a portal and receive the orders from the physicians to provide uh, smoking cessation programs or Workouts at the YMCA, things like that. So that's yeah. all. It's just starting right. to get right. But yep, and we also, I also recently got approached by some of the schools as well to join the highway to uh, start reporting, uh, actually to exchange with their respective uh, healthcare organizations, like the school nurse. And so here is a detailed list of all the Department of Public Health registries that are currently connected uh, to Mass Highway and. Uh, the prescription monitoring program is currently in, uh, in test, uh, so as soon as that goes live, uh, we'll also be able to uh, exchange that communication as well. And um, uh, another one that's not on this list, uh, which uh, uh, you, some of you probably might be attending this afternoon, um, last week I had learned it, <laughs> that uh, Reliant is also doing what is called a specialized registry uh, submission of data to uh, Massey Health Collaborative, and they use Mass Highway to send that specialized registry data as well. So those are some examples of that. And today, I know on the right opposite room, we are having some Department of Public Health uh, uh, explaining about meaningful use. So that actually just is a, this is a natural synchronization of using Mass Highway to submit all of their respective registry transactions. And if you have questions about it, you can just go over to the next room and then ask them the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, first question, do you know if the, um, I, we had a question that came in about the foster care system um, and the organization who treats a lot of kids who are go through the system and they have to submit records or get authorization from, uh, I can't think of the name right now, but through foster care. And I was wondering if there was any, do you know if they're going to have a, a note or anything on the highway for organizations like a primary care physician? who somebody is presenting with a child who is under DSS custody, mm -hmm. um, and they need to determine whether or not this person has authorization, and they need it, the information like right away in order to treat the child. So, so that's a 278, right? Yeah. So that's a, yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Mass Highway is built with all of the, the agencies within UHHS to, okay. uh, to work that way. So when we've had conversations with DSS and with DCF, about um, ways that they could use the highway. In order to implement that, you know, there's a system design work that would need to happen, but um, okay. there's, an obvious, uh, there's an obvious benefit to being able to do that, and I expect in the future that we'll see more and more uh, agencies using the highway for uh, some pretty creative purposes for exchanging healthcare information. And I think there's, uh, there's a lot of benefit to that, especially for agencies that are, that are working on paper now, a way to, uh, way to uh, bring that in, you know, electronically into their own systems and to be able to share in a secure manner with the providers. I think we'll, we'll yeah. definitely see that in the, in the coming years. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we also have like uh, NEHIN is a administrative data exchange service function mm -hmm. uh, organization and that's also connected to, uh, it's actually, it's in testing right now with Mass Highway as well. So I know some, I mean in the future maybe, who knows, but when, when we all are mature enough, then there is a potential of clinical data and administrative data to follow more synchronously. All right, so here is a, a quick pictorial view of how a specialist referral might work. So a scenario here is, uh, let's say your Murali walks into his PCP and he has a problem and he needs to get referred to the specialist. So right there, uh, if the, uh, the doctor, the PCP, and the specialist are already on highway, then the PCP could uh, uh, say, take my CCD, uh, the client's uh, summary of care document, and uh, they can send it over the highway uh, to the specialist. So that's the example that I was explaining. So it's very simple, straightforward. So if it is any, I'll give you an example, if it is an EHR, so within your EHR that's connected either through the private disk of their own or through mass edit directly, for the front end user, it's completely agnostic. So they don't need to even do any additional steps. You are within your EHR, you pick, uh, go to the module that uh, provides you with the direct messaging service, and you pick the patient chart, you attach it, 
you pick the address that needs to be uh, sent to the specialist address you say and then you put that in the two address you hit send it will uh, seamlessly go and on the other receiving end you can it will show up on the in the providers uh, safe EHR or different EHR or whatever system they are on and they can pick that CCD chart and they can either import it into their existing EHR or they can just keep it aside as documents uh, that come with the chart uh, or with that patient and they can refer to it whenever they want. So does the receiving specialist have to be part of a member of the Mass Highway? So yes. Okay. Yes. No. So it's a closed network. No. Uh, okay, uh, no uh, so I mean, I, I okay. So I'll keep it's to be to say part of the network. Either you are part of that network through other private tests such as Next Gen Share or eClinical, or through Mass Advertising. But you have to be within this approved connection of network of organizations within Mass Highway. So it's a, still a closed uh, circuit of communication. But it can be considered Mass Highway either the sender or the receiver that would be on the Mass Highway or both. Uh, yeah. if, it, if it were between two other tests, there would be a direct connection between them. It wouldn't go across the mass highway, but the same concept applies. So for most of the most of the organizations, the EHRs are going to select the, the HISP, the service provider that they choose to use. And those service providers will have made arrangements with other service providers so they can exchange information. If it's if it's going, coming to or from the mass highway, that's through an arrangement that we've made with another HISP. But if you have two separate HISPs, there's still a lot of work, a lot of organizations that have made those connections, so it's very likely that. So an example would be, let's say, Holyoke Medical Center is trying to send a referral to all scripts provider, then we would not even know. As I first of all, it has nothing to do with it, and you are sending it over the eClinical HISP network connection to the all scripts HISP network connection, and it will immediately show up in that EHR. Yep. So, but each of you have a connection to the Mass Highway, so for your yeah. patients that. Uh, you know, doctors there, you can get to it. It's just about picking the address, like we already said, it's like, it's like an Outlook address versus a Gmail address. Um, so here is an example of a hospital visit when a patient gets admitted to the emergency department. Um, and, uh, and if you are trying to send a notification or send the actual care information over to the PCP, if you know the PCP, uh, then you could use Mass Highway to do that. So again, uh, I'll take, because Holyoke is here, I spoke to Becca Sweet last week and uh, she had said some of the great work that Holyoke is doing where they are. What the way, uh, some of the challenges are little nuances. I mean, although it's, uh, I'm going a little bit outside of our current uh, scope of uh, discussion here, but uh, it's important because this is about operationalization of a highway. Highway by itself is the ability, it gives you the ability to send, assuming that you have the data about that patient and the provider, right? Now, when a patient walks in for the first time, how many situations are there where you don't even know the, who the PCP is, right? So the, the, that is the step one. So you need to find out who the PCP is, and if it is not there, you assign the PCP, and sometimes they might say, I don't even have a PCP. Then you have to say, do you know who you want to assign? <laughs> and then you can ask that. Or the third step is, no, I don't know who it is. I don't even know where, and, but I don't care. But if you go on, would you mind if I assign a PCP to you? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I will assign John Smith to you. And by the way, he's on Mass Highway, and uh, you can then send it to that person. So that's another way of how you can, now you see, we are fixing not just the care coordination, we are also fixing the fact that a patient doesn't have a PCP is now getting fixed because, so these are all the natural, advantages that you get and normally people do not think that this is possible. I mean, I, I, can, I, I want to take that claim as mass highway because, because of that now you are provocated to think like that and say what else is missing in providing a continuous care and how, what else can I capture to make sure that I can avoid re -admissions. So that's a, another very solid example of how you can use mass highway. Questions, comments? Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a, hopefully you'll see Dr. Garber speak on this, you know, his, his goal, I think, is to make, almost take the clinician's workflow and make it invisible <clears throat> and get the machines to do the work. Uh, we're in a real in-between time, though, where it's hard to get, to get that there. I, I heard somebody talking about the number of clicks to do an extra thing yep. over with, with Amanda. Um, I think his flow, once, once he's mapping these primary care providers to an address, actually can get the machines to do the work of 
automatically getting a discharge summary triggered and off, uh, or a care summary over to the ED before the patient even show, you know, shows up on the board as admitted. Um, so this is the kind of data work that, that a lot of people are investing in uh, right now. A lot of, if you take a look at your EHRs and your primary care provider, whether they're identified or not, you'll probably find it's, it's kind of a mediocre set of data right now. Um, so people are taking analysts right now and saying, for the next three months, every patient that comes through the door, let's, let's capture and clean up our PCP field for, so that we can start um, triggering off of it. So it's a moment in time, but this will really help to get to the machine to machine um, uh, yes, yes. Um, do you guys just know of any solutions that helps to kind of tie into some sort of registry of PCPs? Because like for us, you know, we have the, like we are by definition a specialist organization, so we're, we are some patients PCP, but not all. If we look at the list of providers that are available, it's only our own providers. So you kind of get into this space of relying on the patient to remember how the name of the PCP is spelled, what the address is, there's a lot of free texting, the data gets very kind of messy very quickly there. Um, or, I mean, are other EHRs just able to handle this better than Next Gen is? Or, no. I mean, I think this, I mean, workflow is no. fantastic. <laughs> no. This, this is, is a fantastic, but like identifying like the right piece of piece. Yeah. yeah, this is a kind of a product of where we are at time. I think somebody came out of the financial services field mm -hmm. where information in financial services was flowing for like 10 years. So people started to cross reconcile and correct for those yeah. things. Healthcare is in a state where it's, it's been fairly siloed. And because of that, you don't have that natural, oh, I call that person Dr. Jones and you call it you know, Dr. Joe Jones. That kind of stuff takes a little time. The, the intermediary can be the provider directories. And it can be one of the functions. It's basically a directory for addressing purposes. But that, you know, the highway exchanges with with the other HISPs that are capable of having those directories. And over time, that can be one of the places that starts to sync up. Um, I think, the, you know, the industry is moving towards uh, a desire to have a, a, some kind of national directory or, or at least a regional directory that everyone can tap into so there is a way of synchronizing that. Right now, they're individually maintained and exchanged, and so it's a, you know, a little, a little trickier that way. Uh, but it is, it is building, and I think over time we'll, we'll see that come about. And there's been push at the national level to, to standardize the, the content, and then the next step is to start bringing it all together. Right, and if anybody, if anybody is interested, just so you know, um, we can just contact us, and we can at least show you the Mass Highway provider directories, how to access them, how to get them sent to you on a regular basis. Um, and how to use them. So, at least for our, uh, for our base. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. In terms of the, um, whether it's an immunization, a discharge summary or summary of care, the envelope information, when it's being transmitted and it's being received by the PCP or the hospital, what are, the, what are they seeing, like the receiver? Do they see like the person's name, date of birth? What, so, what it depends on the type of the document that mm -hmm. you send. Mm -hmm. um, if they send what is called as a CCD, mm -hmm. um, it's a, a typical an XML document uh, that's uh, uh, consumable. If it comes right into the EHR, uh, some of the EHRs have the capability to immediately transform it into a readable format, um, or they actually can import it. Uh, so that's how, if it is a ADT message, the admin uh, discharge or transfer notification message, that's an HL7 message and typically not human readable. Uh, and most of the cases, the system is already configured or programmed to consume that information and then put it into the structured data of their respective homegrown system or whatever they use. So that is yeah, this is a, the moment in time right now is, you know, these things are just starting to be sent. And a lot of the energy is on getting them out the door because of meaningful use. Um, and there's going to need to be equal and opposite energy with receiving them and importing them and using them. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, in early days, so people are getting empty CCDs or they're getting 90 page um, CCDs with the history of the patient from the beginning of time when they really wanted an episode. Um, so a lot of this team's work and a lot of Keeley's team's work has been just to, to kind of get those 
getting meetings together and say, okay, Holyoke Health Center, Holyoke Medical Center, and the people that you trade with, what are you receiving? Is it usable? Why? Why not? When does it come? Is it episodic or longitudinal CTD? Or would you rather just have the note, you know, which parts, and what are your things <coughs> capable of? That's the kind of time we're going to be in for probably 18 months before these things really start to, um, you know, and just another comment about the state of the industry. For those, the EHR vendors right now have been really focused on compliance with the meaningful use uh, certification rules, so they haven't had as much bandwidth to innovate. Um, those that are kind of reading the T-word leaves forward are thinking, okay, meaningful use certification rules are starting to back off. The vendors are going to start to have more of a bandwidth to innovate on the CCD. You know, CCD is, is an envelope with, you know, hundreds of data fields mm -hmm. that are defined. You know, it's not meant to be the end state document. The HR vendors are meant to take what's in the envelope and to present it to a clinician in a way that's meaningful. So we expect, again, this would be a moment in time where the data is horrible at first and, and not very valuable, and the clinicians are going to throw up their hands and say, I can't find what I need. That feedback has to be built into what we do as humans to get the vendors to, to start to make it useful. Yeah, and if I can just add to that, I think one of the things that we're seeing, too, is that every vendor does this a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. and, and so really the most important thing that you can do on your end is to sit down with the vendor, which I know is tough to get a hold of them, somebody who knows anything about this, but to say, how do I start to, you know, what can I do with respect to sending and receiving? What can I do with respect to creating a local directory from, you know, the people I want to send to so that it's easier for my clinicians to find this? They don't have to go offline to a spreadsheet or something like that. Um, what can I do in terms of configuration from a system admin point of view to create this kind of CCD that I want to send to the people who are receiving this so they don't say, this is garbage, please don't do it anymore, we're going back to facts. So learning that, um, and we're also interested in learning it with you, um, so to the extent that you have those conversations, we're anxious to hear them um, as well. Um, so the, the highway can send and receive essentially has really said anything, but where is your vendor to Mark's point at this point at this moment in history, what can they do? And we've seen there are certain vendors who, although we can send anything, you know, like as Marley said, a picture of a dog, um, there are certain vendors who can only send and receive a CCD, period, <coughs> and that may not have discharge something. So that's where you guys need to really talk about what we're learning is with you as you go. Along. I mean, we have seen both sides, we have seen organizations that have come along, uh, they here. They initially said that we are good and we can start sending and some of them have or under the impression that their CCD was good enough, but then when they start exchanging and putting it into real action, then they saw, oh, I, I, you know, I need to have this field, I need to have, oh, I don't see immunization data, I don't see all the visit data, I don't see the insurance carrier information, and some of the basics are missing. So, you know, people, vendors have developed the CCDs with bare minimum standards that the ONC has defined, and then that's what they're saying. So you you do have some work on there, but uh, I, it's not a daunting. I, I wouldn't say that it's impossible. So you, if you work and uh, diligently on that and try to really make it meaningful to your organization, what are the basic minimum fundamentals <coughs> data that I need to make a real actionable information actionable uh, diagnosis on the patient on the other side, and then you'll be able to achieve it. And, and the vendors, the EHR vendors, are. Uh, working on interoperability as well. Yeah. They, they want to be able to you know, send and receive to people using other systems and have it be meaningful. And so there are standards that are evolving. There, there are a lot of forums for, uh, for them to get together and decide on what's, you know, what's important, and what, what steps they need to take in order to be more interoperable and to provide better data. So we're going to see that coming, you know, one more thing that's just evolving and coming along. You have to watch their definition of interoperable. I mean, we have an interface between Meditech and eClinical Works through our health exchange. Well, Meditech sends the problem list and SNOMED codes. Eclinical yep. Works, <laughs> while it can read SNOMED codes, cannot say. import those SNOMED codes mm -hmm. into the system. So yep. all of a sudden it's like, well, that's great. I have a bunch of SNOMED codes. I have to hand type those in to get the ICD-10 code that goes along with it to put in the problem list. So they say, oh yeah, we, we, we interface with Meditech. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, each one is sending what they can, but nobody is talking. I am not never, never sending what the other person needs to receive. <laughs> so, so that those are the conversations. So those are the pitfalls. I suggest what that is where we have been very effective, and I I want I am I am very confident on this that we have resolved those problems. In the, way, in the way that we, I mean, obviously they're not coding, right? But at the same time, when we ask those tough questions up front, it saves a bunch of time for everybody on the organization side so they don't suddenly find out after implementing and spending so much money, oh, I can't really use it. Yeah, so just out of curiosity, because I've worked with other HIEs before, is there a conversation happening at the national level between HIEs to work on that data standardization and validation? So when, when it gets to the point where you're going state to state or state to multi-state where you're, when you're sharing information, we're not starting from scratch where you're talking about, okay, Massachusetts has done it. Everybody in Massachusetts now is sharing information freely. We, we figured out all the data validation issues. Now we've got to start again because now we're starting to work with New York and New Hampshire or whomever. Is, are those conversations yeah, just out of curiosity? It's a national standard that we follow. The, so it's the, uh, the direct standard. When we talk about direct messages, it's direct with a capital D, and it follows the, uh, the guidelines of the direct project. Uh, so the you know other other HIEs are also doing that. When uh, when EHRs are having uh, certified EHRs, they're following the direct standard. The ability to send those messages. Uh, that that standard I think is evolving over time, uh, and there are some. Uh, National committees, the uh, the office of the national coordinator, um, standard. HIT standard <laughs> committee. That's right. Uh, setting some of those standards. One of the you know, one of the things that we've struggled with from an interoperability standpoint is there there are some standards where you can do it either or. Well, that means for every HR vendor, if they want to communicate with everybody, they've got to do both. Because someone might have chosen one or the other. So those are the kinds of things that we struggle with in terms of. To, coordinate, but as those get tightened up over time, you know, they'll look better, but everyone is following that national standard. So we, we in fact, in Massachusetts are uh, connected to New Hampshire and can exchange with, with them. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we just uh, signed an agreement with Oregon, so we're going to be uh, able to communicate with uh, vendors that are, uh, you know, that are, that are in Oregon and, and part of their, their statewide HIV. So. I, I only ask because I've, I've worked out in the, the Kansas City area with uh, Cahan and, and Lois and Clark, and I mean those two are 30 miles or less apart and they're having issues sharing information, so I was just curious. Yeah. No, uh, you'll see, uh, so, so, uh, yeah, so no, it's, it's a, the, there's two, there's two big models at play, if you look at Lacey, which is more a clinical data repository model, right, Cerner? Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so as you notice, we decided as a state to stay very lean and to focus on point to point exchange and that data would, would be controlled by the data holders, by the, the provider groups and the healthcare providers, and then exchange. Um, I think there are other groups out there that have done more like Lacey's model where everybody contributes to a centralized place and then accesses that centralized place. You know, those two worlds can act and live together pretty well. Um, and, you know, it happens in this, in this state, PVIX is in Springfield, and has, has that same model, and PVIX and the highway work together. So the highway provides some of the point-to-point -point trans, transport, and PVIX is a deeper clinical data repository for more deep longitudinal patient records. Um, so, so it's not an either-or kind of standards thing, it's, it's an and. Um, so if the, two, if the two make sense for different clinical reasons, uh, we can make them work together. So, and we can talk a little bit. So you'll see in, just in the subsequent slide how many different varied uh, um, organizations are talking to each other. So that in itself is a variety, actually. So here is a quick overview of uh, how the 550 plus organizations are broken down by the type of organization. So we have uh, about 58 hospitals that are connected, uh, 426 plus uh, ambulatory organizations, and uh, we also have about 90 long-term care facilities. So if you are in one of those networks, so you'll be able to. And we also, in addition, we also have about 10, more than 10 plus organizations. We have, uh, interestingly, we have insurance companies also on Mass Highway who are receiving patient information from their respective providers uh, as well, and uh, some labs. 
Um, here is a quick uh, trend on how we are uh, transacting on the highway. So as you can see, we are now about 3.2 million transactions per month. Uh, that's how many tra messages are being sent uh, on the highway across all of those 550 organizations. Um, obviously, we don't have the uh, uh, transactions that are being sent between all scripts and e-clinical or all scripts and e next gen share or something like that. But these are just purely mass uh, going across various uh, networks on a mass highway. Um, and here is a, a breakdown of what type of uh, transactions are those 3.2 million per month. Or uh, so, as you can see here. Um, we have some uh, public health reporting, as you can see, that is our majority of uh, the data uh, at this point of time, but of course we are also swiftly growing on the transitions of care, um, so which is, uh, as you can see, we have 174 send organizations that are sending transitions of care and 157 receiving in some form of the shape. So that's, that's true care coordination that's being sent. Uh, exchange over across the states. So that's this is a very good example of how it's improving. As you can see, we pretty much started at zero. So, <laughs> so that's it. Uh, I mean, it takes time, uh, but we're doing, uh, we're marching steadily. And we also have these uh, quality data reporting for where people are sending it for PQRS or clinical quality management. And some payer case management is the one where the insurance companies are receiving the patient data for certain, for their operations. Um, and so here is a, a quick overview of how a query and retrieve service works. Uh, so this is the, uh, so assuming that you are also capable of uh, sending direct secure messaging. So what it says is if, uh, how would a patient's care be more coordinated uh, when I walk in and who, how do you know? How many times have you asked, have you asked yourself like, oh, where else this patient has been seen in the last 30 days or last one week and what else has been done to that patient. In some cases, the patient uh, is knowledgeable enough to share all of that, or some cases they, are, they don't remember. So in those cases, typically if you see, they can, you, if the patient comes in, um, let's assume that again, you're presented with a consent and you tell them that I'm going to disclose certain relationship information about your provider uh, to, the, uh, to the world or to the network of mass housing. <coughs> and at that point of time, you push the patient information. When I say patient information, we're talking about very basic demographic information, such as the first name, last name, middle name, uh, date of birth, um, and, uh, and the, the ID within that particular hospital system, um, and the date on which that event has happened. So what you do is you send that information over to the mass survey. Mass survey stores it in a secure repository, just that basic seven to eight data elements. And they're being made available to other relationship listing service member organizations. So meaning if your organization has signed up for that service, and then you, and also if you happen to have the consent of that same patient to see the information, only then you will be able to see it. So for example, if Murli walks into the hospital A and I give consent to publish my information to the relationship listing database, then my information is being stored there. Now if I go to hospital B and I'm presented with that same consent again, and if I deny my consent at that hospital B, they do not have the visibility to that information. If I say yes to that hospital B as well, then they can query the database and say, oh, let me see where else Murli has been or which are the other providers that he has in a relationship with. And they can take a look at that or it will say, oh, last time he went to so-and-so hospital, and that's all they know. They know nothing beyond that. At that point of time, they can say, let me get the last, uh, last one looks like you were at hospital A and you had so-and-so test done. Let me get that result from that hospital. So they have to make an explicit request to that other provider and seek that information. So there is nothing pull. It's all still push. It's all being controlled by the sender of the, or the person that is requesting the information. So I'm gonna take a pause here for 10 seconds. So anybody, any questions? Um, I know it's a lot uh, to consume in the very first because we have talked about a lot and so many things here in the last one hour. Um, but feel free to ask any information um, as we move further. You mentioned uh, labs. Right. Um, are there any plans or is there any current uh, vendors that are 
doing transmission lab results between the uh, system? What the transactions that are the, I mean, we don't see the transactions, mm -hmm. but uh, just by talking to the, uh, the organizations, they're sending the results to other, uh, other organizations for their own uh, need. But it's not like the EMR lab orders that are being right. Because those are already established in the EMR. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to use an external system because that's already happening with the time handshake. Mm -hmm. Well, I was referring more like if they didn't have a lab interface yep. at the hospital, you know, if, um, if they would use the highway instead of establishing a direct point. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's a classic case, uh, but I, I, I don't think we have such situation yeah. right now, but mm -hmm. you can definitely request that. And that's where we've been stepping and we're asking organizations, do you want? And we can facilitate so that you don't have to have again VPN network. You see, not a lot of that yet here, but mm -hmm. in New Hampshire, uh, a lot of the hospital CIOs that have eight, nine, 12 different lab interfaces actually see the, the identical service as the Mass Highway up there, it's called NEO, and they're consolidating lab interfaces right now. They're saying, well, why don't I get to one? I can reduce costs, I can do se reduce security risk because I know it's all eventually. Um, yeah, especially if you're dealing with multiple labs, multiple hospitals, you know, and, and just having just one interface to the Mass Highway and being able to communicate versus having three or four interfaces to each hospital. So time? Yeah, I want to be respectful of time. I want people to have time to get to their next breakout session and we have another one beginning here. Um, I want to thank you all for coming and I really want to thank our panel here. This was, this was really helpful. Um, I do want to let you know